Okay, my name is, uh, first of all, hello to everybody. I am Martin, it's an honor to be here. I'm from the Adam Mickiewicz University and here I'm going to show my PhD on going thesis, which is the title, it may be a little bit overblown or even pretentious, but because there's still no, no there's no clear agreement if the type, if one sees supernovae, they came from high mass stars, let's say higher than 30 solar masses, or they are binary progenitor systems of high or high um, stellar masses, let's say between eight and 20 solar masses. So let's talk about the outline of the presentation. First, I'm going to talk about the importance of supernovae, why it is important to have a good knowledge of these um, explosions and the motivation of the of this presentation that is we have only a few detection of the progenitor star and the supernovae explosion so one way to 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 study this is to study the environment of the supernovae that is studying the molecular cloud which is the the onset of star formation and in this case i'm going to use the alma alma data so skipping the whole methodology and the, all the computations, the result is that the progenitor initial masses of stars from super, of type two and one C supernovae, they are similar, which in general, I, I'm going to repeat this maybe a few more times, that the main mechanism for strip the outer layer of type one C supernovae is given by a companion. I'm not saying that because a uh, supernovae progenitor of type 1c, it may be high mass stars because the stellar, the strong stellar wind can blow itself the, the outer layer, or in this case, um, by a companion. But given my results, is because a companion in the main result. I'm not restricting only to because of the companion, it can be both, both mechanism. So we all know that the universe and specifically stars are not static objects. These are this form, this, uh, the stars evolve and the stars die. Uh, how do they form? They is because the gravitational collapse, collapse of mo uh, molecular clouds. And is defined as a broadly characterization of stars is when the uh, stars the, in the core, the nuclear reactions. This evolution properties, how is going to be the evolution track or the like the evolution in the Hertz Russell diagram is going to be defined mainly by the initial mass and other parameters also important like the chemical composition, the binarity, the, the interaction with the uh, interstellar medium. And the final stage of uh, stars that can be Again, broadly defined as red Ryan station or supernovae, which I want to focus only supernovae flourishing in this talk, in this talk, because these are very, very extremely high energetic events that are responsible to eject metals to the interstellar medium, and in that way it's going to affect the next generation of stars, being the next generation of stars more metallic and with different properties than previous supernovae explosion at lower redshift. It, this uh, this expansi expanding shock wave can also affect the star formation because can form more dense um, regions and can trigger the star formation in these molecular clouds. So historically, uh, supernovae have been classified as without hydrogen lines in the spectra and with hydrogen lines in the spectra. And I don't want to focus in thermonuclear explosion that it does not have silicon lines. I want to, to focus on core collapse supernovae that is higher than eight solar masses. Specifically in type two that it has helium, it shows helium and hydrogen lines in the spectra and focus also in 1C, which shows no helium lines and no hydrogen lines in the spectra. That is because why we can 
why is it not possible to observe helium or hydrogen lines in the supernovae? It because it was removed by mechanic by the by a companion stripping the outer layers or by the strong stellar wind if the star is very very massive. So the most direct way to to observe to constrain the supernovae explosion with the supernovae progenitor, that is the star, uh, means having direct, direct observation of the progenitor, which is this, this case of uh, supernovae 2012A, which was observed uh, the explosion 10 years ago, but having follow-up observation, this paper was released this year in January, um, the star was vanished and it can be appreciate, appreciated by the Hubble Space Telescope that before there was a star. The problem is that this needs a very high resolution. You can see here that is uh, one, one arc second. And we don't have pre-explosion image for all the supernovas. In fact, this um, an, an, uh, and there have been only detected, sorry, confirmed like 20, 20 disappearance of supernovae progenitors having pre-explosion and post-explosion. But the interesting thing is that there have been not confirmed progenitor star by pre-explosion pre image and post-explosions by type 1C which uh, makes wonder what are the, if there is a connection, if the supernova, sorry. So uh, to, to analyze this, not the, from the direct way studying the supernovae progenitor, it is necessary to study the environment, to study the molecular cloud parents, that is the molecular, the molecular gas in the environment. So is there a connection between the supernova type and the molecular cloud parents? And second, initial masses of type two and um, one type two and one C core sub supernovae progenitors are similar. Uh, short answer is yes and yes. The first one, there have been previous uh, papers. The, the answer is yes, but how is what I want to answer here. And the two is, this is the controversial part, but in the astronomy, astronomical supernovae community, I agree that um, in general, the may, um, progenitors of type 1C supernovae are binary. So in order to analyze this, I use ALMA data, specifically using the FANX database. database. That FANX is a collaboration that aims to understand the interplay of the small scale physics of gas and star formation within galactic structure. And this database of ALMA observation includes 74, 74 filar galaxy using the CO observation line at a spatial, a spatial resolution of 100 parsecs, which um, this a spatial resolution of 100 parsecs is the typical size of molecular clouds. Plus we have 16 observation of type 1C supernovae location of um, the CO line, which make this the, the study, the largest um, study at this resolution for type 1C uh, supernovae in comparison with type 2 using the CO221 observation line. So the, the supernovae are grouped as thermonuclear and core collapse. So as I mentioned, I don't want to focus in thermonuclear supernovae. I want to focus in core collapse as type two at one C. And the methodology to, to extract the value is very simple. Just locate the supernovae position in the FANGS database on in our observation. In that way we can extract the CO line intensity. This gave us 63 supernovae in 49 galaxies. And it's, uh, I want to mention that these galaxy samples are in a, are have comparable masses and comparable luminosities, which is a homogeneous galaxy sample. Also, in order to have a statistic 
statistic, a standard statistic measure for all galaxies, 100, 1000 random pixels are measured in every galaxy. So in this map, it is possible to see the a typical galaxy map in, in units, the color bar means the uh, surface density of molecular gas, molecular hydrogen gas, which this uh, sigma mole is just a simple conversion of the CO observed, the observed line. And this surface density, it trace the molecular cloud intensity. And in the inset, it is possible to see that there is in fact a, a high correlation between the supernovae environment of the sigma mole, sigma mole because the, lo the lowest scale is let's say 100 and it's associated with a molecular cloud with a very high intensity at 1000 approx. So repeating the whole process for, for the whole sample, the 23,000 random positions, 12 type 1A, 30 type 2, and 21 1C. And the plot is shown the empirical cumulative distribution, where it, uh, there is a clear shift of random position of the, let's say the median of the galaxy sample in comparison with the supernovae environment of um, molecular gas. And when the Kolgomorov Smirnov test was computed, um, the random pixel position and supernovae location do not come from similar distribution. And I want you to focus in this plot because this is, this is the most important plot of the, of the presentation. It may be weird because there are only four points but as I said at the beginning, it is the largest um, study at this resolution. So yes, it is it's the important plot where a few things can be say about this plot. First, that these are the one sigma confidence interval but for 10,000 Monte Carlo simulations. So at one sigma of confidence interval that is seven, 68% of the of confidence is that the environment of type 1A supernovae are in agreement with random location. That is that um, the molecular cloud parent of type 1A, type 1A supernovae are not um, linked with the, with the mo molecular cloud parent. But this is come more interesting for core collapse supernovae because they have, I would say, extremely um, similar values. And it is well known that if there is a molecular cloud with high density, then it is expected, okay, thanks. It is expected to form more massive stars. So, if there is the if the high mass star progenitor for type 1 C supernovae is true, this value should be shifted to higher values, very high values, which is not the case, which suggests that both, both progenitors have similar masses. So I don't I'm running out of time, but let's say that let's assume that the the molecular gas uh, decays as an exponential exponential law. E and um, sigma zero is the, just a normalization constant. Tau is the lifetime of the of the molecular cloud, and sigma mole is the value that we measure. So using the ratio, this gives us that this is the difference is just zero point four mega year plus minus four. And using values from the literature plus our own ratio obtained, this is this from the table. Uh, at two sigma, that is 95% of the sample. If we assume that 
for the initial mass, the zero H main sequence mass of uh, type two supernovae is 11 solar masses. Then the range of two sigma for type one C supernovae progenitors are going to be between 10 and 13 solar masses. Um, okay, so this is the, these are the conclusions. And just to, fin to remark that I'm not saying that the it's only big, the 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 for supernovae one C uh, progenitor progenitor stars um, the strip of the outer layer is not given because the strong stellar winds is because the binarity as a general results and thanks for your time. <laughs>